It's great to see you all here this afternoon for what is going to be a really important and amazing uh, press conference. Uh, we're going to have to help the press get uh, on board here, but we will. Uh, welcome to members of Riverside who I see present with us this morning. I'm Michael Livingston. I'm the interim senior minister here. And I got an email a week or so ago from uh, Freeman Palmer, who's been a member here, a UCC executive in Philadelphia, asking if I'd be interested in meeting Pastor Anthony Williams and hosting here at Riverside a press conference. Um, and I said, let me talk to him. Let's, and I've had the great pleasure of talking to him almost every day since. And <laughs> God bless you, brother, for your persistence and your work and your prophetic ministry. And we're going to hear from Pastor Williams in uh, a few minutes now. But let's begin with prayer. Loving God, we thank you for the call, the claim you make upon all our lives to show up, to be a part of beloved community, to care about humanity the way you care about each one of us, whatever our race, our nation, our nationality, our faith. We are all one, all a part of your family. We gather today to say no to violence. We gather today to lift up the cause of violence in the kind of perspective we ought to hold it, as a pandemic, as a virus, as a cancer that eats away at who we are as a people. We pray your presence among us this afternoon. In Christ we pray, amen. Amen. Violence took the land that became America. Violence won the freedom that made the nation. Violence forced the labor that built the nation. Violence sustains a status quo that keeps a few in power and wealth and exploits and oppresses, especially people of color and women. Violence is our centuries old pandemic. It's time to treat it like the crisis it is. Claiming lives in too many ways, violence, poverty, poor education, unequal access to health care, unemployment and wage theft, gun deaths, Reverend Anthony Williams sees this and has had enough. He lost his son, Nehemiah, at 34 years young to violence. He walked from Chicago to Washington, D.C. to ask President Biden to sign an executive order declaring violence a national health crisis, a pandemic requiring comprehensive approach to real solutions and the resources necessary, the money necessary to get this work done. We'll hear from Pastor Williams in a few minutes, but we're going to begin now turning to John Lindsay of the United Church of Christ. John. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is John Lindsay, and I'm joined by my colleague in the front row, Walter Reyes, and we are with the Pension Board's United Church of Christ. Today, I'm going to read a statement from the, uh, the General Minister and President of the United Church of Christ, Reverend Dr. John Dorhauer. The damage violence does to the body is evident to all. What every religious leader can describe is the emotional, psychic, and spiritual damage it leaves behind on its victims and their loved ones. The physical wounds sometimes heal, the emotional ones rarely do. Too many people live their lives with the emotional scars of violence. They suffer PTSD, nightmares, loss of trust, lingering grief, an inability to trust others, and a constant fear of another attack. The cycles of violence must be thwarted or they will, or they will only worsen. Violence begets violence. We can easily become desensitized to its ravages by the ways we either dismiss it or romanticize it. P 
People with power and visibility must disrupt our acceptance of it as something inevitable, unavoidable, or worse, acceptable. The United Church of Christ wants to thank Reverend Williams for bringing attention to the health crisis caused by violence. We also call upon President Biden to sign an executive order naming violence a health pandemic. The use of his office as a bully pulpit will help raise awareness of this dire matter and give it some much needed attention it deserves. Thank you. Thank you. Now I want to call upon Representative LaShawn Ford from Illinois, from Chicago. The state's already begun to do something about this, and he's had a key role in that, and I hope he'll take at least a few minutes to describe some of that work to us now. Thank you, Pastor. And I'm happy to be here from the House of Representatives in Illinois joining our leader, um, Pastor Anthony Williams, here in this great church, United Church of Christ. And I know that coming here, we all join forces in our fight to call an end to violence and to call on President um, Biden to call violence as it is a health crisis. We know that when the president recognizes violence as a health crisis, a disease, you begin to see a different approach to dealing with it. We know that there was a, and we're still fighting the pandemic, the COVID-19, and you see the resources and the efforts put forth to fight the pandemic. Well, Pastor Anthony, he's been fighting the pandemic of violence long before his son was killed in Illinois. And so I'm happy to be here in this town to join his efforts as he continues to go across this country to call violence a health crisis. And I'll just end with a parable since we're in the church, and I talked to a pastor about this because I don't think he sleeps. You know, he's up constantly. Let me tell you, he's serious about the business of making sure that this nation um, ends violence as it continues to kill people all over the country, not just in Illinois, but every city and state we are experiencing this pandemic of violence. And so I do know, I talked to Pastor about Matthews 25, um, verses 14 to 30, and it's the story of a master who was leaving his house to travel, and before leaving, he entrusted his property um, to his servants. It's what the Bible says. I don't like to use master and servants, but I'm just telling the story and reading it as it is. So according to their abilities, one servant received five talents, the second received two, and the third received one. And when the master came back, he did a review of what people did with the talents. There was one that did nothing with the talent, and he was condemned by the master because he wasted the talent. Well, we all have one talent that we can come together in this country, and that is to stand against violence wherever we are. That's a talent. It's a talent because it's something that God has given us the ability to do. Let's stand against violence. Let's call our president that we've voted for or whether we didn't vote for him, he's the president of the United States and asked him to sign an executive order to call violence a health crisis in America. Thank you, Pastor Anthony, and I look forward to your journey as you continue to fight this pandemic in America. Thank you, Representative Ford. We're going to call upon Gail Brewer now, the Manhattan Borough President. Uh, we all know her. She's a friend of uh, New Yorkers. And by friend, I mean not only someone that you can trust in a relationship, but also someone who brings resources to bear upon problems that impact our lives. Welcome, Gail Brewer. Thank you very much, Reverend Livingston. He's just 
laughing because I've been coming here since Coffin. That's a long time ago. Reverend Coffin. Those of you who don't know him, that's a long time, but I do love this church. But you locked the front door. I didn't know what to do. Uh, but I got in the side door. Um, thank you very much, Pastor Williams. It's an amazing effort that you're making that's incredibly important in this country. We've learned so much about crisis in the last few year and a half. But I think we've learned in that how important public health is, how we investigate it, what the infrastructure is, and what the real investment has to be. Public health is the science and art of a society preventing disease, prolonging life, and improving our quality of life. The World Health Organization says health, and I think we know this, it's a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being. It's not just the absence of a disease. You need the entire part to be something that is real. Treating violence as a public health problem is an innovative way to heal a crisis that's tearing apart our communities, the physical, mental, and social well-being. In terms of the statistics for the city of New York, just to give you an example, in terms of shooting incidents in 2019, shooting incidents, there were 766 for that year. And in 2020, 1,000, I mean, 2020, I'm sorry, 1,531. And in 2021, now from January to July, already 803 just a few more than the entire year of 2019. And in terms of shooting victims, in 2019, there were 923 people shot at. In 2020, it was 1,868. And already, January to July of this year, 2021, 931, more than even the entire year of 2019. If that doesn't say it all, I don't know what does. We have to use every possible lens to stop the gun violence, and we have to use public health. Anyone who knows that I know, knows me, knows that I care about this data. I gave you some New York statistics. We lose 50 Americans a day to violence, and from the guns, the knives, the bare fists, from cars, and from the worst, of course, being the guns. Measuring this is important to talk about public health. When we talked about COVID, we measured the coronavirus. We found out how many cases. We figured out who was vaccinated and who wasn't. And because of that data, we figured out what to test, what to scrap, what sticks. That's how we got the life-saving vaccines. We're not doing the same as we should on gun violence. We need to have the data and treat it from every angle. We need de-escalation on the part of the police and community leaders. We need to teach conflict resolution in schools, restorative justice, and we need to fund violence integration interruption programs. We have two in Manhattan, um, street corner resources in Harlem, and we also have uh, a one in East Harlem. But we need many more, and of course they exist across the boroughs, and to the credit of the governor and the credit of the mayor in New York, they are putting money into such programs. But we need holistic solutions addressing the root of violence, better housing, education, and so on. The safest communities have the best quality resources. That's the public health strategy we need. But we know that if Congress wouldn't act after Columbine, Sandy Hook, Pulse Night Club, they're not gonna act now unless we do what Reverend Pastor Williams said. We can act, we can insist that President Biden, who's doing a lot of good things, but this would be another that he must, make stopping violence a presidential public health priority with an executive order. Thank you very much. Thank you. A lot of preaching going on in up here this afternoon. Amen. <laughs> Now, you know, you're not really a pastor if you don't have members. And we're going to hear now from a member of Reverend Williams Church in Chicago, Marlon Watson. 
Thank you, Pastor Livingston. Uh, my name is Marlon Watson, assistant to Pastor Anthony Williams of the Martin Luther King Community Church in Chicago, Illinois, and president of the FDOC, the American Freedmen Descendants of Chicago. And as a young black male born and raised in Chicago, I know that black men, the rate of homicide amongst black men is 50 percent larger than the national average. And black men are more likely to die from homicide than any, anything else. So these are the statistics and this is what they say. And they are correct. But what they never say is that the black community is more likely to be targeted with legislative and economic violence. Uh, redlining is a form of structural violence. Jim Crow was a form of, of violence. Um, slavery was a form of violence. Economic exclusion and legislative exclusion are all forms of structural violence. And so the violence we see, when we talk about gun violence and domestic violence, is often created by the violence we don't see, by structural violence, by legislative violence. And this is what we have to target. And when you tie all of these things together, it has created a problem of violence in America. These things aren't black problems. They aren't white problems. They're American problems. And President Biden can solidify his legacy in targeting structural violence, the violence that creates and perpetuates the violence we see. So we urge the president, what will your legacy be, Mr. President? We urge President Joe Biden to sign an executive order, do like we did in the state of Illinois with Representative Sean Ford and Pastor Anthony Williams and when we made violence a health crisis in the state of Illinois. Make violence, structural violence, a health crisis across this country. The racial wealth gap is violence. Remedy these problems. And just like in the Bible when the tax collector who was a government agent, the Bible suggests that the tax collector repented once he gave back what he'd stole, once he repaired the breach, once he fixed what he'd broken. So America must do the same, and we can do that by targeting structural violence. So we urge the president, Mr. President, we beg you, sign an executive order, make violence a national health crisis, and let's make America a country that we can all be, we can all live in civilly and safely. Thank you. I understand Marlon may be heading to seminary one day. I want to suggest he go to Union right across the street so you can do your internship right here at Riverside. Amen. All right. We're going to hear now from Steve Vileka from Senator Schumer's office. Steve. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm so happy to be here today. Uh, I want to first thank Reverend Livingston for having us here at the beautiful and historic Riverside Church. It's truly a wonderful house of worship you have here, and we're all blessed to be in it today. I also want to thank Pastor Anthony Williams uh, simply for his dedication, the amount of time, work, and energy that he's put into tackling violence as an issue is nothing short of inspiring. Um, while the senator couldn't be here today, I want to briefly reiterate our focus on violence as an issue. The American people have been demanding and deserve meaningful gun legislation in this country to address the festering issue that has been growing in our nation, and the senator remains steadfast in his commitment to bringing the same type of energy that Pastor Williams exudes all the way to the floor of the United States Senate. And us, as his office, are eager to continue working with all of you at every level of government and community engagement to not only curb but eliminate gun violence as an issue in the city, in the state, and throughout our nation. Thank you.
There are simply too many parents in our nation who have lost children. Too many brothers and sisters who've lost siblings. Too many people who are like Pastor Anthony Williams. It's a story that we need to stop hearing over and over and over again. And as he is going to say, I am absolutely certain, it is both about the guns and the gun violence and about this culture of violence that is endemic in our society. I said at the beginning, it's violence, the genocide of the native indigenous populations here at the beginning of this nation, it's violence. In the revolution, it's violence. In the enslavement of people from distant shores, Africans come here to work for nothing to build this country. It's violence. It's a huge, enormous fact of our life in this nation. And we need action that understands and recognizes that. And I know Pastor Williams is going to talk about that now as he comes to us. It is indeed a pleasure to stand in this magnificent house of God. I remember as a boy watching Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. speak against the Vietnam War at Riverside. Now I'm just a boy, but I said one day, God, I would like to just go and visit Riverside Church. And here I am. I am here with you all today, brothers and sisters Christ and Dr. Michael Livingston. I know you are the interim pastor, but maybe they need to think about keeping you as the permanent pastor. And you can invite me back to preach. But we are here today to call upon our President Joseph Biden to sign the executive order on violence as a public health crisis with a plan of civility. I do not talk about gun violence. Gun violence is a symptom of violence. I do not talk about systemic racism. Systemic racism is violence. The word violence means to violate, to violate. We must now work towards transforming the culture of violence. The President of the United States with the power of a pen can begin this process. How does that process look? First, we had to educate people. We had to educate people because right now the American public is looking at the gun, a symptom of violence. People need to be educated in terms of what we're dealing with. The CDC has said that violence is a disease, but not a contagion. Our health professionals across the board are saying that violence is a health crisis. That's been taking place for the last 20 years. So how does this transformation of this culture look? By education, collaboration. Marlin mentioned the fact he talked in terms of structural violence. Unfortunately, whether we like it or not, I understand the sinful nature of man. And America was built on two things, genocide and slavery. This paradigm is in the system of our social structures. This new America must rise above the fray and deal with structural violence, education, collaboration, civility. Now the highest form of civility is nonviolence, but civility, 
do not kill me because I bump your car because neither one of us have insurance. Civility. Can we agree to disagree and redirect the funding? Representative LaShawn Ford, who will probably be the next mayor of Chicago, you all is here with us. When we brought our story to him, he and the other key lawmakers got together and on April the 27th of this year, we passed a health reform bill that calls violence a public health crisis, a disease. Now, your governor, Governor Cuomo, he was bragging. He said, I signed an executive order on gun violence as a public health crisis. He's almost there, but you've got to tell him that violence is a public health crisis. As I conclude, this has been a long journey. Having lost a son, Nehemiah Williams, February 21st, 2018, the violence, I knew that I had a mission to accomplish. We accomplished that in the state of Illinois, and we passed legislation. But now we need our president, Joseph Biden, to sign an executive order on American violence as a public health crisis with the plan of civility. We need the help of Pastor Reynolds and Riverside Church to continue to push Biden to hear us. The young gentleman from Senator Schumer's office, see, the elected officials, half of them got it wrong. They keep talking about gun violence. That's a symptom. We must be a healthy American. We cannot allow our children to live like this. Look at we're leaving our children and our grandchildren. I heard the testimony of one of the members of Riverside who tells the story about her niece going to see her nephew at the naval base and she's got, she got shot. And Chicago, four month old baby, shot. And so we become anesthetized, we become numb to violence. This is an American problem. We are better than that America. As we are fighting our way through COVID-19, this other pandemic of violence, wait, it's out there, you all, it's out there. This is why we need Riverside. Riverside is key to our quest. And I wanna thank Pastor Reynolds and all of you for opening up your doors. Young man, you've got to go back and tell Schumer, we will not stop. We will not stop. What was January, what was January 6th at the Capitol? Was that January or July? Jan what, what was that? That was a form of violence. See, this violence is it's funny. There's 20 levels of domestic violence and four levels of global violence. I conclude with the, the theology of this. When we began to study this, we, we looked in the Gospel of Matthew and, and, and Jesus was in the graveyard and they said, Jesus, there's this demon in there and he's, he, he's robbing, killing, shooting, plundering, raping, and we chain him up and he breaks the chains and we can't stop him. But we hear you do all these miracles, Jesus. Can you do something? And Jesus walks in the, into the graveyard and Jesus asked the question, that's not for Jesus. Jesus knew what it was. He, What's your name? What's your name? His response was legions. Legions. This Leviathan will destroy us called violence. It's legions. But then the hope is in the Old Testament of Habakkuk. When you a book that I really didn't like to read that much. I, that, the book of Habakkuk, and okay, let's move on. But it opens up, Habakkuk the prophet says, God, how, much, how long must I look at the violence? Violence everywhere, violence everywhere. How long must I look? But then in the second chapter, here's the answer for us in the 21st century. Write the vision and make it plain that those who read it may run. Riverside, we need you to help us write the vision. You are Riverside. I 
I know what Riverside represents. We need Riverside in this battle right now. We need Riverside to call on the president also and call on Schumer and declare an executive order. Biden, first of all, you work for us. We don't work for you. Now let's get this right about elected officials. Mr. President, sign an executive order on American violence as a public health crisis with a plan of civility. When we look at the attitudes of America, mental illness is off the chain, you all. We cannot go into the 21st century with this kind of mentality. We cannot live like this. No one is safe. When I walk through Gary, Indiana, Reverend, I asked him, how many of you all feel safe? Raise your hand. We walked, we walked from Chicago to Indiana, to Ohio, to Pittsburgh, to DC. And every citizen that we spoke with said these words, I do not feel safe. I do not feel safe in my own house. How can we continue to live like this? But I'm optimistic, I'm hopeful, because you all are here and we're at Riverside. So I want to thank you. And this is, I'm, I'll be back again here at Riverside. But once again, we call on President Joseph Biden to sign an executive order on violence as a public health crisis with a plan of civility. Thank you so much, Dr. Thank all of you who are here. I'm very humbled to be here, and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.